Добрый день, дорогие участники вебинара. Сегодня мы с вами рассмотрим интересную тему, которая будет посвящена публикациям в журналах World Scientific. И с вами сегодня команда World Scientific во главе с Амандой Юн. Please. Are you done? Yes, yeah, please. So can I start? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Um, I'm I'm Yen Hong uh, from uh, World Scientific. Um, and today I was uh, invited to give a talk about um, uh, to a certain extent uh, writing uh, a technical paper. So focus will be talking about the structure of a uh, paper uh, and after that then uh, I would open up to uh, question and answer and uh, I'd be happy to take question then but uh, in my talk if you got any issue that you want me to uh, answer I'd be happy to entertain that so shall we start okay um, Today, you are invited to a talk by World Scientific Publishing Company. Uh, we are a, a STM publishing house. It stands for Science, Technology and Medicine. And uh, in the company, we do publish both uh, books and journal. So uh, can I have the second page, please? Uh, So World Scientific uh, actually is the independent uh, publishing house. Uh, I think it established about, about almost 40 years ago. And uh, it, our founder is a physicist. So initially, uh, the focus subject was on physics. And then it grew over the last uh, 40 years into we are publishing about 600 books. A year and at the moment we got uh, 140 journal that are actually managing by us so um, we from the book side which I wouldn't want to spend too much time on because today we are talking about uh, how to write an article for publication in a journal from for consideration so however we'll just uh, quickly touch on both side of our product uh, our book program actually uh, published um, a lot of uh, 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 title from various very famous people like uh, uh, Nobel Laureate and, and uh, because our founder chairman is a physicist so that's where we started so we have actually published a lot more um, title by uh, physics Nobel Laureate than other people, but I think we have a full comprehensive collection of all of them. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, we actually is a Singapore-based company. Uh, we have our own building. Uh, and in Singapore, we have about 200 uh, staff. And uh, however, we do have uh, offices uh, around or across the world in, in uh, Europe, in US. So let, let me show you the map, the next one. Okay. Uh, we established in Singapore in 1981. Then we opened up a, a US office 1987 and in London 1988. And later on we'll go to Hong Kong, Taipei and so on. So you can see that uh, we have uh, office mean quite a number of uh, what we call important market or places. Uh. So can we have a next slide, please? Uh, so this is just a, a small collection of some of the books that we publish and it show you the subject area actually ranging from mathematics, physics, chemistry, computer science, engineering, medicine, life science, business, and econ, and including some popular 
title and uh, uh, also including social science and Asian study. So although we start from physics as the main subject, then we slowly uh, expand, and cover almost most of the, what we call the SDM area. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, our author, including many uh, Nobel laureates and also some very famous uh, professor from uh, the top university around the world. And here are just a small list to show you who they are. Um, can I have next slide, please? Okay, now we now we'll go to the main topics of what I want to talk about today. Uh, journal publication actually uh, a lot to talk about, but today I just want to focus on um, mainly how you write and structure um, uh, article for uh, journal publication. And that also included conference papers uh, because both of them are quite similar. So uh, this, this cartoon is basically just to show you uh, some of the so-called motivation that are uh, driven people to publish. Uh, so the next slide, please. Okay. Um, I, uh, although, I although I managed uh, books and journal, but I focus mainly on journal. So over the years, uh, I have uh, been an author, I have been a reviewer, and also have been editor. And I've seen uh, all kinds of problems that actually uh, we encounter as an editor uh, in editing journal. So I will share with you some of the problems that you might want to take note. Uh. So the next one, please. The next slide, please. Now, uh, first thing is a, a thing that many authors will ignore and not take note of, but it's the most important thing, which is before you submit to a, a, a journal, please read and check the aim and scope. And I I've, have come across many, many uh, Good paper, in fact, uh, they get uh, rejected um, as soon as they are submitted and because they are out of scope. And that tend to be a key reason that a lot of paper that get thrown into the dustbin because they are submitted to a wrong journal. It's not that their content are no good. It's just they are submitting to a wrong journal. So please, please read the aim and scope of the journal that you are interested, you are planning to submit to and making sure that the topics are within the boundary of that journal. Because the first thing that the editor-in-chief will do is that check whether it's out of scope. And in our scope, uh, there is no next, uh, just throw into the dustbin already. So for you, it will be a waste of time because you may be waiting for a few weeks and uh, getting an answer. But frankly speaking, uh, if you have read the M in scope carefully, you will not even have submitted to this particular journal. So in this uh, particular slides, I want to focus is please check the M in scope carefully. So to publish in a journal, I think the other thing that people are concerned about is so-called the impact factor. Now impact factor work both way. I mean, it's good that to publish uh, your paper into a very highly cited, uh, have high impact factor journal. Yet on the other hand, you have to see whether your paper have actually reached that center to be accepted. And I, I think we all have to start somewhere and it's okay to start from those that actually have yet to have impact factor, but you have uh, actually, uh, the journal actually are quite visible in some respect. So look at it that way first rather than um, Anyhow, just pick uh, any journal that with high impact factor, uh, you are not going to get considered anyway. So the thing is that first, you judge and perhaps also that send your paper for some colleague to comment to say, okay, would my paper be considered for this particular journal before you submit? So 
uh, aim and scope and impact factor are the two key things that you must uh, take care of. Uh, the other, other point I don't think is that critical. Uh, you can actually find out uh, from uh, the publisher uh, before you submit your paper. The next uh, slide, please. Okay, here are the, some of the um, key journal that are published by us. And they are the, what well, we consider that is our top journal in various subjects. Uh, one particular one, let's say mathematical logic. Uh, this is actually the number one in the world. Although the impact factor in mathematics, this is not look at it compared with engineering or whatever, they are not considered high, but the area are so niche that this is the number one. So the rest of others are actually uh, considered as a uh, key uh, journal in, in uh, our collection. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, amongst uh, all our 140 journal, uh, International Journal of Neuron System is the one that with the high impact factor. Mm -hmm. And last year it was 5.6. Uh, and it ranked 18 out of the 136 uh, ComSci AI journal. So consider that it's a, a journal that's quite difficult to get into. So if you want to submit to this particular one, you to make sure that uh, your article are somehow of the standard the editor-in-chief will consider. You can read some of the paper from there and see, okay, how that's compared with mine. Okay, the next one. Uh, these are some of the issues that you consider. I just quickly go through them because a lot of them are actually quite standard stuff. Um, all the journal actually have a particular, uh, what we call um, footprint or what we call uh, is, is the format. So you must read because some of them are in uh, what we call journal size, which is about uh, 6.5 by 9.25 or something like that. And they are also A4 size, American A4 size. If you read uh, and come across the IEEE E1, they are like more like a kind of A4 size and double column. So you must read uh, the requirement of the format so you can um, edit or lay, lay them out in according to what they want. So this is uh, something that you can actually find out by getting a sample copy of the journal or you can always go to that journal and pick up any paper that are published by that journal to look at it all and probably find out what is the layout and you your so-called manuscript had to basically conform with that requirement. So um, the other thing that you have to be aware of is uh, what uh, type you should basically write your paper into. Now, I'll just roughly tell you that uh, for us, and maybe a journal that by other publisher, they normally have uh, three type of uh, paper. The more Typical one is called a research article. Typically about 20 pages A4 in terms of length. And then uh, they mostly reported some uh, new idea, uh, new finding. And so this is a so-called research article. And the other type is called a review article. Now review article as you Bobby could uh, realize that uh, the word review means uh, this is the article that author will review across the spectrum and um, telling you what are the development of a particular topics, uh, maybe starting from once upon a time to uh, current day and uh, tell you who and what they have done. So this um, research article uh, tend to be longer. However, uh, research article usually are 
uh, written by uh, expert. Uh, we normally don't accept the review article from ProStock or from junior researcher because uh, to able to write review article, you must be an expert of the subject and you know the subject well. So this is the second type of paper, we call them review article. And the third one is a shorter one, which is about maybe eight to 10 pages. We call them technical note. Uh, they are similar to research article, but you do not need to actually put a lot of uh, result and contents uh, inside the paper. So it tend to be, you have certain view on certain subject and you want to share that with people. So uh, in summary, there are three types, technical note, uh, research article, and uh, review article. Uh, review article sometimes could be pretty long. Um, some go like 50, 60 pages, but um, usually they are well cited. They, they are written by the expert. Okay, uh, other uh, quite uh, kind of um, logistic stuff is that uh, we require you to clear the copyright clearance. So uh, you have to sign off a copyright uh, clearance form, that kind of stuff. So uh, read the author guideline. Uh, and you will find out what is required. So those are things that I do not want to spend too much time with. Okay, let's let go into the main subject that I want to talk about today. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, today mainly I want to talk about writing. So uh, this is some of the problem that I have seen as an editor over the year that I will share with you. Uh, choosing a title just like your parent given a name to a baby. So why you are given that name? You, you bear certain thing. Uh, so you have to choose the title carefully. Uh, a, a, avoid using uh, those things like a, a kind of a groundbreaking uh, something. You are not doing advertisement, so be careful that word you choose. Just be plain be precise, uh, no advertisement, uh, and um, not too long. Uh, I mean, I, I like a uh, title to be one line, but if you go across two lines, my but not longer than 15 words. Uh, title is the first thing people look at it. So if from the title, you can actually tell people about what is the problem, how you intended to solve it in, let's say, one line or two lines, then it's a fantastic title. So throw away all those words that are like telling people that uh, you have done a fantastic research, this is groundbreaking or something. Don't, don't use words like this. Just write to the point, what is the problem? How are we going to solve it? If you can be presented and embedded inside the, the one or two line title, that is a very good title. So uh, careful about uh, the title that you have decided. The next slide, please. Okay, in fact, the key slides this morning is this one. Is how to write an abstract. The why I'm talking only about abstract and not the entire paper. Later on, I'll share with you such that in fact, abstract provided a skeleton of the entire structure of the paper. If you know how to expand it. So abstract is the first thing people write and also is the last thing that people go back to edit. Uh, before you do your PhD or before you write your paper, the first thing you drop down is probably a half a page uh, description of what the paper should look like, should be focused on. So abstract is very important and to write abstract well is a skill that if you have, it will improve your chances of your paper being considered. And I would like to summarize the abstract into your abstract, although it's only about roughly 250 words, is to cover three key points. 
And the first key point is the so-called originality. Now, originality is something that become a bottom line of um, accepting uh, what we call article. Because if the work are not original, they are not worthy of publishing in the journal. So originality is very important. The word originality, if you look at dictionary, what does it mean? Even nobody else on earth has ever done it or attempted it before. It's quite a tall order. Uh, although it's subject to interpretation as how people interpret the word originality mean. Um, later on, I'll explain more about uh, originality later on. But typically, originality need to address two uh, questions. What is the problem? How we define the problem? So the second point is called ability to test idea. What I mean is that in the originality section, you spell out what the problem is and you define the problem. Now, ability to test idea is trying to offer evidence to justify your claim as being original. So this is usually uh, spread from your chapter three, four, five, six. All your key important uh, results are actually considered as ability to test idea. The whole of this is to confirm that your hypothesis is either true or false, and your model is it working or not working, and what you have set up uh, inside your originality, could that be proof or repeated or reproduced? So. The second point is the most uh, time consuming one as far as you are concerned as a researcher. That you may spend two years uh, of your time. Uh, and in fact, this is only addressed to the second point, the ability to offer the evidence. Uh, the third one is called contribution to knowledge. Contribution to knowledge is actually something that right at the end, a bit like the conclusion people write, but how to write them well? Uh, you have to basically put yourself in a perspective such that uh, what is research? In fact, research is nothing more than finding a gap, a gap that no one has touched it before. So therefore, there will be somebody before you who have actually touched some surrounding neighborhood of the area that you look at and for some reason, you are lucky that no one has touched the gap that you have identified. That, that's why you can claim originality. Yet, uh, you must aware of what other people have done in the similar area. So able to connect what your originality is with other people's work, and then to basically enlighten people's understanding of the subject is what I call a contribution to knowledge. So it's something that you put that in conclusion, but you have to connect to other people to basically to a certain extent able to highlight how much you have done to help people to understand the subject. You cannot be the only person in the world that start from nowhere and come up with, with this. There will be somebody in front of you have done similar work before. So you must basically able to connect them right here. So in the 250 words uh, abstract, if you can put in these three things, then you have a very well written abstract. So, in fact, the whole talk this morning is about how to write this abstract. And it is so important that later on I will show you from these three points, I can expand to seven points and that cover the entire paper. So since uh, I'm not taking question at the moment, I will leave that to the end. So can I have next slide, please? So as I say that originality, you can expand them into your introduction and your review chapter. So in fact, there are two uh, questions here to answer. One of them is what is the problem and how you define it? The next question, please. The next slide, please. Okay. Um, 
I, I can only put them in a nutshell as Ruby uh, tell you how I using this graph to represent the so-called the type of research. Uh, this is by all means not uh, uh, universal that everybody agree with it, but this is how I put it. Okay, uh, in research, um, I put them to two different direction. One of them is methodology. The other one is domain, which is the problem. Now, uh, monkey, can you make one click? So I got the red one. Uh, okay. Um, if you are working on a known methodology and using a known uh, into a known domain, this is considered as the less worthy type of paper. So in some respect, they are very little originality, but in here, um, you will somehow still get published, but usually in conferences, um, because uh, you will show your attempt and trying to reproduce the result that people before you have done it before. And uh, when you just uh, finish your PhD, uh, you are doing your postdoc, most likely a lot of time the paper you are writing are uh, in this area. Uh, so, that's not means not worthy of publishing, but you can actually consider writing some of this uh, stuff from conferences. So this is uh, the the less uh, so-called uh, worthy type of paper. Um, the next one, okay. The um, We call them something disruptive but cheap. Uh, is you have a new methodology uh, to solve the old problem. And so these are something that usually you'll find them in the uh, business uh, management type journal or design uh, innovation type of journal because it's something like the problem already there and somehow somebody come up with a uh, probably new way of doing things. And one typical example I often cite is uh, iPhone is one of these. Uh, phone actually exists before iPhone come into this world. And the way that Apple package iPhone is basically develop uh, uh, music mp3 player and becomes uh, something that so useful and good that everybody like to have one and I got two kids and I uh, remember I have to buy uh, two um, these so-called um, don't know what, what what was it called the uh, MP, mp3 player uh, produced by Apple and so when I was in university I, uh, we always ask a question, uh, why not we put a connectivity inside this music player, then it will become a wonderful phone and with a very good uh, MP3 player. And this is what Apple have done to come up with an iPhone. But Apple being Apple, Apple is not a telco to start with and therefore it doesn't have any foothold in the uh, telecommunication. But they come up with a very good idea of able to get a lot of telcos selling iPhone for them. And that's how iPhone take off. So this, I will consider as some kind of disruptive technology that actually solving the telephone problem um, using a MP3 player. And uh, there are a lot of things can be written about uh, this idea. And so you consider as more like article, you find them in um, design, uh, innovation, so quite an interesting area to publish. So it's not considered and not worthy of publishing. So this is the second area. The third one. Uh, the third one is actually find uh, a new application uh, in the new uh, application. Well, find new application using the existing solution. So um, if you look around, uh, you find a lot of this. This is type of paper, you'll find them mostly on in engineering type uh, journal. Uh, typically is that 
um, nowadays you see uh, you can actually call to get a taxi and people use this idea to say why not you call to get a takeaway and why not you call to get a, a bike or something like that. So a lot of these actually are using the so-called assisting technology and find new application. So these are also area worthy of publishing, but usually in engineering journal. So find new application. Uh, the last one is the best area, but uh, you have to find new solution for a new problem. So usually you find them in pure science journal, like physics, maths, chemistry. So if you can get something into here, so usually uh, it's something worthy of pursuing. Uh, a lot of Nobel Prize are inside here. So next next slide, please. Okay, I will now expand the three point into seven point. My three point, let me just repeat it, is originality, ability to test idea, and contribution to knowledge. So now we pick up originality. You have to answer two questions. What is the problem? And decompose the goal into objective because uh, you need to able to focus on into objective before we can go to the next step of the call ability to test idea solving the objective one by one so uh your introduction you should have to basically spell out what is the problem and inside here you will also have to basically describe where the originality come from so and you decompose them into objective and say how you're going to offer solution or if you like evidence to prove that your hypothesis uh, is working and your solution is better than the one before you. So if you got any like uh, literature review, uh, put them into section two, which is chapter two in the thesis of what people have done before you. Okay, the next slide, please. Now, uh, ability to test idea is, the most complex one is you have actually set out uh, your so-called originality, uh, defi define what is the problem. So the rest of the section of chapter is you will have to uh, offer the so-called evidence to confirm your hypothesis or to show that your idea work. So, uh, how you start from here. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Okay, if you, if you were to able to define your problem into a list of objective, so uh, monkey, next slide please. Now, you can see that uh, I have organized them into five different uh, so-called sections. Let me just quickly read them. Uh, constructing a strategy, organizing information about the problem, allocation of resources, uh, monitoring problem solving, and evaluating problem solving. Okay, let me just go to the first one first. Um, one, you have defined the problem into a list of objective. Uh, constructing a strategy is trying to um, find solution of this so-called objective. Uh, so, the five, uh, the, the four point that I'm listing down here is how many different papers you can generate out from the research that you have. Uh, so this is the so-called diversity thinking. Um, in, in the PhD that you have done or work that, research work that you have done, uh, usually involves some concept. And uh, you will have to use certain uh, technology or methodology. So this is the so-called uh, platform. And the third one is basically you will need to have a case study to basically show that it worked. So this is application. So in general, there are actually three components inside every research if you are doing applied research. So in here, you can think about uh, how am I going to organize my paper? Is it going to be a concept paper or is it going to be a 
a platform paper or is it going to be an application paper? Uh, let, let me just quickly uh, use an example that I have. Uh, I have a PhD student that came to me. He actually uh, uh, sponsored by the army. And he came to me and tell me that he want to do a PhD in war game. So uh, we uh, define the problem into uh, the war game it mean is to use computer to do planning. So I need a methodology of AI, distributed AI, we call them planning. So that's a platform. And uh, um, what we call concept uh, is to base on a, what we call standard operation procedure in the army and trying to computerize them uh, using AI. So the third one is I asked him, how would you able to offer evidence to show your external example that your idea work? So we decided to apply uh, it onto chess. So chess becomes this uh, so-called uh, example or domain of application. So when he sit down to think about what to write paper, in fact, he can write three paper. And this is how the diversity thinking here that uh, would help you that when you sit down and thinking of, oh, uh, what should I package my research into? How many paper can I package into? So uh, as many as you can think of. So you start sitting down to think about it, you will find that application, there's one paper, domain, there's one paper, concept, there's another one. So uh, each of them will publish into different journal. So this is how when you decided uh, what your paper is going to look like, uh, you can start thinking of how many components inside your research. Now, being divergent at the end, you have to converge. So just like uh, at the end, you have to say, okay, now I am to write a, a chess paper. So we're talking about chess. So you have to basically gather pieces that inside your research that talking about chess. And this guy, in fact, working with me, uh, on his PhD, his chess is only about end game. So he just go and collect uh, his sixth end game then to organize it and to publish it in the chess uh, uh, journal. So in terms of strategy, this is what you have to think about it. Diversity thinking, how many possible topics. Uh, conversion is to help you to decide on which paper you need to zoom in and what are the material you need to finish off this paper. And once you have done this, you can actually start analyzing it to put it down, mapping it onto the so-called a list of objective that you identified in the originality, in the de uh, definition of problem. So that to a certain extent, you develop some kind of strategy and you have to organize them in terms of concept. Now I use the word here, an organized table or content, TOC, is to show you that how many subcomponents that you need to use to put inside your paper. And the organization or information is trying to, if you were to say uh, all the uh, objective that you got four, you label them as objective one, two, three, four. And you draw them on a piece of paper with four circles. Now these four circles have no sequence at all. They just like four objectives that you have to solve in order that you can finish your paper, complete your paper. And the organization of information in this point is actually to draw a line between them to start connecting them in some kind of order. And this will form a concept. So you will, uh, let me put it this way, is that the objective is like a number of circle or island, and they are not connected. So when you look at the information you have and decided to put some order onto them and using a line to join them together, then they become some kind of uh, plan. And that will become, if you like, your table or content for your paper. And why this have to be in section three? Why it's not in section four? And this is something to do with how you want to organize it. So 
organization of information about problem is how you join them into some kind of logical order. Okay, number three, allocation of resources. Uh, you might have more than one so-called uh, plan. And you have to look at the time that you have and the evidence or if you like resources or if you like some of the uh, simulation that you have done result that you can obtain and to decide on which is the best plan to pursue. And that's why I put into bracket decision making. You have to choose from a number of plan and to pick up, to select the best one to basically become the structure of your paper. And by then, you can confirm your table of content for your paper or your book. So number four, uh, I call it monitoring problem solving. Uh, I think it's actually good at this point in time is that after you have the draft of paper, send to someone you know and trust, maybe your supervisor or some of your colleague to comment on the article because that will somehow give you some second opinion of uh, is there any problem? Uh, would that paper be accepted in a particular journal that you have in mind? And later on, get the comment, come back and then modify accordingly. So this covers the five points within the ability to test idea. Uh, inside the red color one, I write down as the section three to seven. And in fact, uh, this is usually are the material you find them in section three, uh, methodology, hypothesis, model. And then section four, you talk about implementation of model or um, if you like uh, algorithm to solve certain problem. And then uh, section five, you may have do some benchmarking, generate some result. So six, you may talking about comparison of result. And then uh, seven, talking about discussion to find out whether or not the evidence are good enough to actually confirm or support the, as evidence for your so-called originality you set out earlier on. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, when it comes to presenting result, uh, it's best if you are doing compare and contrast uh, using table, uh, graph, because uh, it's uh, a, a more so-called uh, informative uh, tools to explain to people what is the contrast, what's the differences. So tr trying to use uh, more graph and table if you can to basically um, uh, present your result if they are benchmarking that you need to do compare and contrast. So the next slide, please. Okay, now we come to the last one, which is contribution to knowledge. And in fact, frankly speaking, in the paper, this is usually the so-called conclusion uh, section or chapter. So inside there, what do you do? There are three things you need to do. Uh, don't write it too long and usually maybe a couple of pages. Uh, summarize. Uh, whether the evidence able to uh, support the claim that you make in the originality section. So this is something that you have to make it very clear whether this paper is considered have uh, done anything positive it depending on whether or not the originality you put forward could be substantiated with your evidence that are offered in the uh, ability to test idea. So the last one, the third one, uh, state your contribution. And then in here, need to connect uh, your work with the community as what people have done before you and how you fit in to plug the gap. And you need a lot of skill to basically able to write this particular section such that uh, your originality is the gap that you identify and you have plugged them nicely inside the right place. Okay, next section, please. Okay, th those are all common mistakes that I don't want to go through it. Uh, uh, if you cannot offer uh, 
strong enough evidence to support your claim, then your paper probably will not be accepted. So be careful. Those things that you have done and not successful one, don't even mention it. If they are not connected, throw them away. Um, careful about the uh, figure that you produce. As a publisher, uh, we often rejected uh, those figures that are screen dumb, uh, screen capture. They are not very good because when they start printing out, they become very blur. And that, it becomes the fault of the publisher. So as a publisher, we will not accept um, figure that are not sharp enough. We, we want high resolution figure. If you cannot produce, then uh, don't give it to us because we, we will reject anyway. Okay, so other thing is that careful about uh, your references. Uh, don't have any uh, reference that are not cited inside your paper. So those are things that usually part of our editorial check. We will check this one as well. Okay, the next one, please. Okay, and I almost come to the end of my talk. And I, I'd like to share with you the so-called three-part template. And I, I come across this one actually uh, by listening to a program in BBC. And that program is talking about storytelling. And it was actually given by a guy called John Luke. He actually was a playwright in BBC for many years. He's teaching people how to write uh, drama, all this. And funny enough, he actually tell you that all stories conform to a three-part template. And in fact, writing a thesis or writing an article are using exactly the same template. And it's quite interesting to use that to conclude my talk is that uh, his three-part template go like this. Uh, the world was... Uh, in some kind of stability, they are order. But something happened and the world become unstable. And you go away to find a solution and then come back to solve the problem and the problem solved and it become a happy world again. So the world becomes stable. And that is how a paper to start with you identify what's the problem, you define the problem, you go away to find your solution, formulate your solution, come back and you actually fix the problem and the world becomes stable again. Does it sound very familiar? A lot of fairy tale story at uh, least, ma. Uh, Sleeping Beauty, uh, there's a dragon, so the prince go away to find a uh, uh, weapon, kill the dinosaurs, and then marry the princess, happy ending. So, um, a lot of story go like this. And in fact, if you analyze them, they are fall into this three-part template. And it's a very nice structure to use, actually to structure your paper writing. Originality, what is the promise, what's your, what's your problem, how we define it. Ability to uh, uh, test idea. Uh, you might be a bit confused why in the red I say, where is the wood? Okay, the next slide will tell you what is the wood. Uh, wood is actually go away to find a solution. Uh, another word to go and find a solution. And what is the truth? You bring back the solution, you solve the problem, then the world becomes stable again. Now, um, with what happened to us at the moment, and if fit very nicely with this three-part template. Uh, before December 2019, the world were very happy. Then we were struck by this uh, COVID-19. The world become unstable. And so unstable that a lot of things happen. If somebody go away to find a vaccine and come back, he will be the hero and the world becomes stable again, and we can go out every Saturday to have a party. Am I right? Also fall into a three-part template. Is it nice? So if you were to write an article like this, depending on where you want to pick your topics, if you're talking about vaccine, so we'll talk about oh, what's the problem of COVID-19, how we define it, or some kind of, uh, uh, if you like disease that will spread around, 
uh, and he attacked the heart, uh, he attacked the lung and so on, and the fertility was very high and so on. So people will have to start keeping distance, uh, not to be too close to each other, and everybody are waiting for what? For a vaccine. So if you now go away, find a vaccine, and you become a hero, now obviously the hero will be the pharmaceutical company or making a big uh, buck out from it. And what we are waiting for, uh, to go back to what we was before, so the world becomes stable again. So using this three-part template, it'd be quite easy to basically summarize my talk as uh, Writing a paper, we start from the abstract. Inside abstract, there are three key points that you must address. Originality, ability to test idea, contribution to knowledge. Then we come to the next slide, then we explain to you where is the wood, what does it mean? Okay, the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, John Luke had written that book and the title of that book is Into the Wood. <laughs> and the wood means go away to another world to find a solution or another domain to find a solution and bring back the solution and bring, make the world stable again. So it actually started off with originality, with a problem and end up with a solution and that's a contribution to knowledge. The next slide, please. Uh, he, he actually uh, modeled his drama all into a three-part template. Act one, establish a character uh, confront them with the opposite. Opposite means uh, find the, the other way of, uh, for example, uh, your character, you are a little guy. Then you, you go to the wood, you find a solution and come back, you become a hero. So you become an opposite from a little guy and become a hero. So writing a paper is the same. Uh, you start with, off with nobody. Then you come up with originality and you identify, define them and you offer the evidence to the experiment you have done and show that it worked and the problem is solved and the world become stable again. So this is how we write a paper and that's how they write their drama, their story. And in fact, most of the story form into this so-called three-part template. The next slide, please. Okay. Uh, I just want to read you the red one. We start with a promise, we confront with the opposite, and we bring home the truth. And this is the three point that in the abstract you must address. So in the three point that I also expand them into seven point that how you can expand them into introduction and your review section and your uh, model section starting from your chapter three, four, five, six, that is your ability to test idea. And finally, your conclusion is the so-called contribution to knowledge. Okay, the next slide, please. So hopefully that uh, give you some idea about how you should start writing uh, an article and uh, I, we hope you come, to, uh, you submit to our journal for consideration. Um, we got 140 journal waiting for you. So. Uh, study from an abstract and remember the abstract must have three things and uh, you must able to identify what's the problem, how you define it and then offer the evidence in ability to test idea and later on you come to your conclusion. So the next one, uh, okay, this is the last slide already. Um, in World Scientific, we have published a number of books about how to write. And the best one, in fact, is the last one. Uh, Sign Research Writing from Non-Native English Speaking. Okay, it's written by a, a lecturer at Imperial College. And in fact, up until today, uh, we have sold 42,515 copy. And it's such so popular that uh, we are coming up with a new edition published uh, this year. I, I'm not sure whether it's out already, but it's supposed to be September 2020. Uh, the book are very well written. Uh, a lot of, um, in fact, PhD students bought them. Uh, so uh, she, she used to be an imperial teaching students 
how to write their thesis. And uh, her, her book actually, uh, I mean, although it's not a textbook that I think a lot of students actually bought them. And uh, it's become, uh, worse I bit one of the best selling books. Uh, you are interested, if you can look at, uh, go to the website, take a look about the contents. So I think this is about the last slide that I have. So I think I'd be happy to take some question. Дорогие участники, будут ли у вас вопросы к нашему ведущему по представленным вам ранее вебинару? Any question that you want to ask? Uh, you can ask them in English or in Russian there because I got a translation. Yes, yes, I already asked uh, participants yeah. if they have any yeah. questions. I, I think uh, my talk uh, actually focused mainly on uh, writing skill than uh, the formality of submitting paper. Because I think those things that you can always go to the journal website and then there are so-called uh, information for author and you can also find the format that required and in fact, copyright curriculum form, you can also find there. So um, in World Scientific, we are using an editorial system. Uh, we call them EM uh, to accept paper. So we just go to the journal, so we submit the paper, and the paper will be taken care of from uh, submission to basically final decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, as for now, I see that uh, Ruslan uh, Mamarai said that uh, he's very thankful for the webinar and he has no questions. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I think uh, if you've got problem in the future after this talk, you can always email me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my, I can, I, sorry, I didn't put my email down because my email... I we will, will share. Yeah, you will share. Yeah, yeah, you share my email. Uh, in yeah, fact, yeah. just just yhng at wspc.com. Uh, yh is my first name, ng is my last name. So there's only four letters. Mm -hmm. So, in the future, if you've got any problem about writing uh, an article, uh, and basically touch on those three points I'm talking about, you can always come back to ask me. I'd be happy to help you to basically uh, structure your paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me follow you uh, in translation. Uh, если в будущем у вас будут uh, какие-либо вопросы по написанию статьи, вы всегда можете обратиться uh, к World Scientific. Мы отправим вам информацию по uh, доступным контактным лицам uh, в вопросах публикации статей, а также всю информацию вы можете узнать на сайте World Scientific. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I mean, the, the last thing I want you to take away is that uh, writing a scientific paper is not such a boring thing. Think of it as telling a story. And you have to tell your audience uh, some wonderful work that you have done. And remember to use a three-part template and uh, that's how most of the story are told. А, еще раз хотели бы подчеркнуть, что написание статей, научных статей – это не скучное дело, как рассказывать какую-то историю, но так вы можете поделиться с миром теми открытиями, которые вы узнали. Поэтому всегда обращайтесь за помощью к нам по написанию статей и будем рады вашим обращениям. Окей. Okay. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to reading your article. <laughs> <laughs>